What is up YouTube? Johnny to be here again today and we are going to be doing something a little bit different uh, in regards to how, we, uh, how I make the video. I'm going to try to do like a little vlog thing and show you guys uh, what I do for work I guess. This is, this is a customer's car. Looks like it was uh, in a pretty big accident. Not really that much but it's, it's still an easy fix. Um, so we're going to go ahead and fix it. I don't really do videos like this most of the time. We just do like an intro get the work done you know i'll show you guys how i did it if you guys want to do it yourself um but this time you know this is something you guys have seen before on my channel i've fixed the core support of an is 300 before uh but just want to like bring you guys along to see what i do on daily so if you guys uh enjoy a more you know personal video where i'm just like talking to you um and you know you guys like the vlogs and just leave a like leave some you know leave something down in the comments see what you guys think um but I gotta get this done, so I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride. So to start taking it apart, you're gonna need 10 millimeters. So this is what I got right here, 10 millimeter with my little gun, little DeWalt gun. This is a 12 volt, so it's really small, compact. It's not heavy, it doesn't get your hand tired. And uh, it won't break bolts. So if it's not strong enough, then you gotta do it by hand. Because if you have one that's way too strong, you're just gonna break the heads off the bolts uh, when you're tightening stuff, so. Let's go ahead and just go crazy, moving as much 10 millimeter bolts as possible and until we have this whole front end taken apart. So now I'm trying to take off the fender, but the bolt that's right here is kind of covered because of the fender being dented. And there's another bolt in here that you actually have to go in through the fender to unbolt, but it's all smashed up. So it's just making it a lot more difficult. And that's typically how it is when you're removing like parts like this. It's just they're, the bolts aren't easy to reach anymore because a lot of the sheet metal is either covering them or it's bent out of shape to where you can't even reach them. So you just kind of have to like pry around and tear apart and just pretty much have fun with it. That's like one of the most fun things that anybody ever has. Like for example, when you're building a house or rebuilding a house or you want to remodel a house, the demolition part is always the funnest part. So tearing this car apart is very fun. When you start putting it back, it's more like a Lego piece, so that's kind of fun for me as well. Uh, but the tear, the tear part is probably like the funnest part. I think that probably anybody can enjoy. Um, it's actually very calming, uh, apart from when you can't reach bolts like that. So, what can you do? Anyone need a IS300 headlight? Have one in perfect conditions. I actually broke it more pulling the fender off because they get they get bolted to the headlight there's two bolts of the headlight that bolt onto the fender i couldn't reach it so yank and uh more shattering but it was garbage anyways so looks like i'm gonna have to kind of like pry this as much as i can open so i can get to the bolt that's there like you can see it right in the middle it's like a nut actually the bolt's up here so when all else fails just rip it off as long as you don't damage stuff that you need, but that's the general rule. So, fender's off. On to the next part. Something that really helps me out is that when I have a bunch of trash like this, just have a trash can. Just throw it away instantly, and then you won't have issues with having any cleanup later because all the trash you made, or the car made, will be in the trash. So, it just makes it a little bit easier when you're working on cars. It's probably like one of the Things that no one likes to do is to have a clean up, clean up after themselves after they're done working on a car. So if you're just doing it while you're working on it, uh, makes it a lot, a lot faster. So we got to do it if you want to keep the shop clean or your garage clean or whatever. So I'm just gonna keep tearing apart the parts, throwing them in the trash, and um, getting this car as bare as possible so we can swap over the course board. So one of the things that was lost in the accident was the front grill, and who knows where that thing went, right? But as I was working on the front, there's like a gap right here between the bumper and the condenser. And look what we found here, part of the grill. Let me see if I can find anything else. Ooh. So the grill didn't survive, but looks like the emblem did so. That's like $40, $50 piece if you need to buy a Lexus emblem. They're not cheap, so I think we found it. So we have an emblem or we could just switch to an Altezza one so it doesn't really matter but that little Lexus piece is nice to have still surprisingly it survived the accident now I got the bumper off so that wasn't too difficult just a couple bolts underneath inside uh, on the inner fender liner 
on the bumper that is bolted to the fender and uh, there was a lot of bolts pretty much what I'm trying to say so bumpers off and uh, it's looking good it's not, not too damaged underneath so let's continue the weirdest design concept on the IS300 is that the headlight bolts to the fender here and here through the inside you can see there's one there right in the middle and there's one up top that's not even bolted down <laughs> someone forgot to put the bolt uh, but yeah there's two bolts there so you have to remove that to even be able to remove the fender or remove the headlight so let's get to those so let's move the tire out of the way a little bit hopefully i can get in there and reach that one with the gun and uh we can get some access to see what else is damaged underneath on the core support that's obviously bent out of shape so we're gonna need to replace that which means we're gonna have to move the fender over a little bit because the the part of the core support kind of like spot welds there in that section so we gotta get as much access as we can get, so we might have to remove this fender. I'd rather not, because this fender's in perfect condition, so I'd rather just leave it, not have to remove it, because it's a pain. There's all kinds of bolts, clips underneath, and the door up top, so I'd rather not. So let's see if I can remove the headlight. Looks like the fan shroud actually pierced the timing cover. There's a little bit of damage right in there. Hopefully it didn't damage anything else. The belt fell off track. It got smacked off. So we could probably just throw the belt back on. Um, connections for the fans got pretty destroyed as well. And the condenser is a bit bent out of shape. You can see from this angle. And I always have to ask myself, did it not leak? Like, did the Freon survive in there? We're gonna have to remove it regardless, but let's find out. Okay, got the bolts off. Let's see if we can remove it. Okay, prying it off now. Uh, Freon definitely got out somehow. So the fan shroud and fans um, are pretty bolted to the radiator. No normally when you put it in, you put it in all together because there's three bolts up top and then there's three bolts on bottom. But luckily somebody forgot to put two of them on the bottom. So all I did was just yank it up, break the part that was bolted. So I can get in there because it's so close and so tight because of the fact that the radiator got smashed in that I couldn't really get my tools in there so it's broken already so we'll just break it off and it's probably really old so it was brittle so the plastic just shatters super easy so got that out next step is the radiator the radiator off and now we can see the engine in all its glory the only thing is that we need to smash that back down it's supposed to be flat so we're going to use a very precise tool to bring it back down that part's actually pretty easy to bend back so we can put that back so literally all i'm going to do is grab it bring it up here and just smack it down and it'll actually bring it down got it smacked down and now it's actually straight so super easy fix hard part is now going to be having to uh, remove the spot welds off of the core support all around so we can place a new one and then this little end right here is actually lower than it should be as you can tell by the kink that's going on right there so we got to raise that up uh, the other side is perfectly fine so just take off the spot welds off of that side take off the spot welds off of this side and raise that side and then we should be able to do the same thing over here, remove all the spot welds, transfer it over, weld it on here, and uh, core support will be in. So I got the core support removed. That was 
fairly simple. The fact that I'm using a little spot welder kit uh, actually helps out quite a bit because the spot welder is usually one of the hardest things to remove uh, but without, you know, because you don't want to be tearing up the, the, the metal, the sheet metal or whatever, or grinding it or cutting it. And with that, you just literally just drill straight through them and it makes it a lot easy without actually drilling a big hole through the through the sheet of metal that's underneath it because you want to be able to have something to weld through or weld to. Um, and if that's, that's removed, you're just going to have a bad time trying to weld the piece back on uh, with your welder. So using that, that little tool helps out a lot. So now I have to go ahead and remove it from the actual like JDM piece. Remove the core support from there, swap it over from there. Obviously make sure I make it uh, to where it's similar to that one so I can just weld it on there and then that should be pretty much it for the core support, hopefully. Let's get that done. So here's the little spot weld tool. It's got like a drill bit on the, on the tip and the actual cutting uh, thing on the sides here, a little bit lower. So what you do is you line it up in the center. It just spins and then you can push it in like that. And then as soon as you start marking the circle, as you can see there, and then you just keep going down deeper and it'll cut it out. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and do that for, the, for all the spot welds that are holding on. And that's how it looks right after you're done. There's a perfect hole on the top piece, but the bottom piece, it doesn't even damage, so. That's what makes using that tool such a breeze. Here it is with the core or the top section of the core support removed. And then we go over here and over here on this side as well. I went ahead and put the fender on, got it to line up. You need to make sure that the fender lines up with that bolt on the core support before you even get to welding that section of the core support because once we weld it, we're not gonna be able to move it. So you wanna make sure that everything is lining up properly. So I bolted down this fender as well. And uh, I think now the next thing is I'm gonna go ahead and put the hinge because the hinge is not on the car quite yet. I'm gonna put that on test fit the hood make sure it latches make sure the fenders are lining up if everything is looking good then I'm gonna go ahead and weld it all up so that it stays firmly in place I know that the center section is in the correct spot because of this beam right here that goes from this bolt all the way down there obviously the bottom is straight so after we strain it out so I'm excited it's coming along pretty good so now that we have this fender right here test fitted, I'm gonna have to put the camera down because I can't hold the hood and have the camera at the same time, but you guys will see as soon as we have the hood on. So let's go ahead and uh, do that while we're getting stuff done. So I got the hood on. It was a little bit difficult because this hood is really heavy. Lexus likes to have their parts be really heavy so the car doesn't feel cheap, I guess. and. Uh, it's a good thing my other Lexus my 06 Lexus that thing feels amazing the doors are like super heavy and when you close them like you just you can tell the difference between a luxury car and um, just like a mass market car where I don't know they're just like tin canny I guess you, this is the only way to explain it so now that I put the hood on you can see the fender line right here with the hood is like perfect the opposite side is not perfect but that's to be expected because that's the fender that got smashed up. Um, so it kind of like damaged a lot of the stuff underneath and that, that side got more of the impact than this side did. So, I mean clearly because the other fender is done and this one's perfect. So now I just got to adjust it as much as I can, see what I can do to make the other side just as nice as this side. This little like space in between the hood and the fender is perfect. So let's go see what we can do. I was up till pretty late last night trying to get the car done. The customer, all he wanted was me to put the core support and install the radiator just so he can drive it out of there and him and his friend were going to finish it off. Uh, so they just needed me to weld and pretty much swap over the core support because it's something that you can't really do at home if you don't have a welder. And sometimes, you know, you're afraid of putting it on the wrong way where nothing's going to line up. So I made sure it lined up and uh, that's all I really needed to do, but they need to be able to, to drive it. So, um, I went to performance radiator because the one, the radiator that they gave me, it was for a manual. So the manual uh, Lexus IS300s don't come with like the oil cooler lines and 
it wasn't gonna work. So that car's an automatic, so we needed to go get an automatic radiator. So I went down to my boys at Performance Radiator, picked up a new one, um, good price. You know, they, they always hook me up. And um, that's what we're gonna be installing. And then after that, the car should be done. So the customer can pick it up, drive it home, and then finish it up uh, at his house. Oh, 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 oh,